I lost my brother when I was eight years old. He was 18, he overdosed from heroin. You know, when I use alcohol or use drugs, I would use it to 100% capacity. Having your life up against a wall in a third world country, 40 hours of flying away from your family while COVID's locking down all borders, it puts everything into a different perspective. You know, there's a lot of questions from my kids when I'm packing up boards and the first thing, are you gonna break your leg again? Or are you, are you, gonna, are you gonna die? Like all these crazy questions. You know, those small moments of fear in heavy waves are the reason why I keep coming back. So yeah, we're actually coming up on, this is gonna be three years since my Morocco injury slash episode, life-changing experience. Um, a lot's happened since then. You know, it, it happened right at the spike of COVID and with competition being stopped, not only in surfing, but majority of sports around the world. There was a lot of questions with career, with what am I doing, with where am I going? And there's something inside of me that really wasn't for sure I wanted to compete but there's something inside of me that I just really wanted to find the joy of surfing again. Um, I wanted to get back to those days of traveling around the world with my group of friends who are like the sickest surfers on earth just charging having fun and enjoying the process you know enjoying missing flights enjoying the layovers and the getting skunked and just like getting back to the roots of of how this all started. Just trying to find the love and find that feeling of, of fear that keeps bringing me back, as weird as, as weird as it is. You know, those small moments of fear in heavy waves are the reason why I keep coming back. You know, I like, I feel like I'm able to kind of leave myself and all my issues on land once the fear kicks in. And it's been a, it's been a really cool couple of years. I can't, I can't imagine like not going through that injury or through that whole situation. It's really kind of been a blessing in disguise and I, I wouldn't change it for anything. Not much was really understood until Morocco. And that's the truth. Like for sure I've had stitches, you know, little bumps and bruises, ligaments that's here and there. But having your life up against the wall in a third world country 40 hours of flying away from your family while COVID's locking down all borders into our country. It puts everything into a different perspective. And that changed a lot. It changed a lot, not only for myself, but for my family. You know, there's a lot of questions from my kids when I'm packing up boards and the first thing, are you gonna break your leg again? Or are you, are you, gonna, are you gonna die? Like all these crazy questions. And um, it's more so, what I do at home, I think, is why they're able to understand it. They see the way I live. They see the changes I've made with health, with sobriety, just with training, with everything. It's, it's not like a temporary camp leading up to an event. It's an everyday.
everyday lifestyle. Sobriety came from, you know, I've been working with Kahea for, this will be 11th, 11th year, I think. I kind of always had to deal with him, like through winter, you know, August, September, it's like, okay, no drinking, no partying. Like, let's get the priorities in line. And I'd get, you know, through the XL Pro or the HIC Pro, whatever it is, into, you know, the Pipe Masters, the Triple Crown. Then we have these big nights, surfer pole, whatever it is, and I would just like fall off the hinges and my winter would slowly decrease because of temporary feelings of getting high or being drunk. I don't believe I was addicted to anything but abuse problems. You know, when I use alcohol or use drugs, I would use it to 100% capacity. I wouldn't just like dabble. Like I'd fucking, when I go out at night, I would go out at night and the night wouldn't end. And that's something that, you know, I thought was just normal. I looked up to surfers who were rock stars as a kid. You know, I lost my brother when I was eight years old. He was 18, he overdosed from heroin. Like, for sure, I didn't think that was cool, but all my idols, you know, Andy, Uncle Derek Ho, like, these guys were rock stars. You know, they're living le legends. They're like Jimi Hendrix of, you know, my, uh, of our community. And 2019, I was in a place with people that really didn't mean much to me. And I was avoiding time from my kids and my wife. And I just knew that that lifestyle was not sustainable. And it was only a matter of time till it all left. And I would be there with nothing. And I just made a decision one day, I looked myself in the mirror to kind of walk away from drugs and alcohol. It was in August, 2019. I never looked back since, you know, it went from like, oh, I need to be sober for a few months to a year to, I don't know, now it'll be four years this summer and there's, there's no indication that I ever want to go back down that road. So it wasn't, there wasn't a reason for it. It was more so just understanding that, you know, life is really precious and this ain't gonna last forever. And the life I was living, it's not sustainable with the family. It's just not. had a pretty good couple of years since the injury like somewhat you know injury free I've had a couple bumps and bruises but nothing too serious until this winter getting slammed on the re scorpion grade 2 MCL tear lip of the wave on the back of my head face first into my board split my face open knocked me out unconscious so there's blood everywhere severe concussion tweaked my hip nothing good in life comes easy and I've been a living testament to that